So we're again still on the Oregon coast, walking up this beautiful trail up to this old growth forest. It's just dense uh, forest under canopy. And you see lots of ferns growing in the understory. Ferns again are vascular but seedless. They don't produce seeds or flowers, but they have vascular tissue. So they have roots, vascular tissue that delivers water and minerals from the roots up to the rest of the plant for photosynthesis. And then through photosynthesis, they capture light, produce energy rich sugars, that then the phloem carries back down the stems and roots that aren't photosynthetic. And this is just a really wet, humid environment where ferns really thrive. And part of the reason ferns have to live in moist, wet environments typically is because of, of the reproduction. Uh, so they do not produce seeds again. They reproduce sexually through spores. You can see here what will happen is on the bottom side of these leaves, this, uh, this tissue will go through a meiosis. You can see these little uh, sori that are beginning to develop, little, little spots. And that's where meiosis is happening and spores are being produced through meiosis. So these spores are single cell and they're haploid, but they're one end. And when they're mature, the sporophyte plant fern will release the spores into the environment all over. And that's how they disperse into the environment. Seeds disperse and for ferns, uh, they disperse through spores. And then these spores will spread all throughout the environment. When they land in these lush, moist environments, they'll germinate and grow into maybe something that even looks like this. It's kind of heart-shaped, but smaller. It's called uh, a bisexual gametophyte. And it's when the spore divides mitotically, it'll produce hundreds and thousands of cells that again produce this bisexual gametophyte. Each of the cells is haploid because the spore itself is haploid and it's just dividing mitotically. And then on the bisexual gametophyte, and the gametophyte is green, it does have photosynthesis and it's providing for its life by actually doing photosynthesis, capturing sunlight. And so it has to have the right amount of water and the right amount of light to successfully do that. And this gametophyte through mitosis will produce an egg and a sperm. That's why it's called a bisexual gametophyte because the same gametophyte structure will produce egg and sperm. And then the sperm will fertilize the egg, producing a single cell diploid zygote that will then divide mitotically to produce a new sporophytic fern plant. So anywhere one of these fern plants is coming out, like right here, that was a place where a bisexual gametophyte established a sperm cell fertilized an egg that uh, produced a, a one cell diploid zygote that then divided mitotically to become a new fern plant. And then the process starts all over. The leaf through meiosis produces the spores again. They're dispersed in the environment. And if you contrast that with all the advantages a seed has, a seed is an embryo packed with food for the embryo, covered with a seed coat, with information about what are the right conditions under which to germinate. That provides a huge advantage to seed plants to germinate at the right time with food resources and protection. And the fern spore has none of those advantages. The, spur, uh, the spore just th is thrown out in the environment, doesn't have any food, it has to capture sunlight and water and do photosynthesis on its own. So the environmental conditions have to be just right for uh, a fern to reproduce successfully. And this is one of those environments where it's really wet there's just enough sunlight that those spores can germinate, grow, photosynthesize the gametophytes, and reproduce uh, a new uh, fern plant.